I want to preach. I preach. Yeah, it's a combination of many, many things. Hallelujah. There's something I was reading my Bible. You know, I see things when I read my Bible. So there's something I was reading my Bible that I saw that I want to preach from. <clears throat> Very nice pattern. I like patterns. I saw something from the book of Exodus. Uh, chapter number 15. Can we go there? <clears throat> uh, so I want us to go to Exodus 15. We want to read a record that was recorded after the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. Exodus 15:22. We're going to go to 27. Amen. Exodus 15, 22 to 27. Are we there? It says, I love this. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he had, when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. The waters were made sweet. Then he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and you do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. That is already nice. For I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this glorious opportunity to minister your word to your people. I'm forever humbled that Lord you can choose the most unlikely to touch the world with it. Thank you Father that somebody here will get something out of tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Wow. There is a story here. I'll give you a title in a minute. Uh, these people, has ju they just crossed the Red Sea. You know, if you read a little bit back, after they crossed, you know, Miriam sang a song, and they took tambourines, and they were excited that God has delivered them from the Egyptians. You know the story. Now, at this particular time, the Bible says they... Then they went into the wilderness and it says three days after crossing the Red Sea they found no water. There was no water. Uh, but the Bible says and they came to a place called Mara. Mara means bitterness. When you study about Naomi after Naomi left you know Bethlehem and went away you know to the land of Moab with his husband and his, her two sons. And when they got there, they got married to Ruth 
and to Opa. You know the story. And the Bible says, and the wife of Ruth, of Naomi died. And then the two sons died, who were husbands to Ruth and to Opa. You remember the story. And this broke Naomi. She was broken. And she decided, I will go back to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. She said, I will go back to Bethlehem. And the Bible says, and you know, Opa left her. And the Bible says, and Ruth said, your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. Where you go, I shall go. You know the story. And the Bible says, now Naomi went with Ruth back to Bethlehem. But in her broken heart, she decided that I will change my name from Nahumi, which means the pleasant one. I will change my name from Nahumi to Mara, which means bitter. I'm bitter. I'm bitter. I lost my husband and my only two sons. I'm bitter. So when people in Bethlehem saw her, came running to her that the pleasant one has come said don't call me pleasant i am bitter my name is mara someone say mara so mara means bitterness so the bible says and and when they got in that place they they tried to drink and the waters were bitter and because of the taste of the water in that particular geographical location then the, the place was named according to the taste of the water yeah, that will preach but I'll, I'll ignore i'll ignore there's something deeper i'll just because i have to go somewhere today yeah the, the place was called because of the water so it was called mara this is nice it's nice so the Bible says as they tried to drink, they complained to Moses that we have been thirsty for three days. Now we are trying to drink and the water is bitter. And the Bible says and Moses began to cry out to God. And he prayed. Hallelujah. When he prayed, God showed him a tree. Hey. When he was praying, God showed him a tree. And the Bible says, and he took a branch of the tree. He took the tree. He threw it in the water. The Bible says, when he did that, the waters were turned from Mara to sweet. The waters were healed because of the tree. And so they began to drink. To drink. Hallelujah. And he says, in that place, God tested them and tried them. Wow. He tested them and he tried them. Hallelujah. And so the next verse says, uh, and he told them, if you diligently seek and heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment, keep all his, I will put none of the diseases on you which were found or brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord Jehovah Rapha I am the Lord that he left thee hallelujah that's Jehovah Rapha Jehovah I think it just depends where you come from but it means the same thing hallelujah and, and I, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to go back to break this down because there are things I've seen here, about five things I've seen here. Let's go to verse 27. 27. Let's finish reading what we're reading. And it says, Then they came to Elim. Now they moved to a place called Elim. In the place called Elim, it says, Where there were 12 wells in Elim, the next dimension was called Elim. And there were 12 wells. Not only were there 12 wells of water, there were also 70 palm trees. Hey, this is nice. So they camped there by the waters. Hallelujah. 
I said, hallelujah. I want to share to you the journey of a believer. The journey of a believer. Something very powerful that is revealed in the text that we are reading. Hallelujah. And there are about five things that I have seen here when I was studying. That really blessed my heart. And I want to share what blessed me with you. And my prayer is that what blessed me should also bless you. Now we understand, just quickly before I go into those five things. We understand that Egypt speaks of the world. The Red Sea speaks of the blood of Jesus. It speaks of salvation to the other side. When you are touched by the blood and you are in the world, you are saved. Hallelujah. And they say that if the devil could have crossed the Red Sea, he would have become a Jew. So any devil that can go through the blood will be saved. Hallelujah. But now, because the people didn't quite understand, the Lord began to release a revelation that must make them... See, what I'm teaching you is the pictures that are in the Bible that were pointing to our day in our day. Hallelujah. And so the Lord began to show them that, uh, that life without Jesus, He's speaking to us through their lives, is going to be miserable. We are going to be thirsty. And there is nothing that can satisfy our thirst. And that if we manufacture anything and we try to partake of it, it shall be bitter to our system. It will not quench our thirst. Are you listening to me? Now the first thing that God begins to do to show us, you see the Old Testament is a shadow, it's a picture of what shall become. If you read it with the Holy Spirit, you will always see things in the Old Testament that speak of our day. So God says to Moses, let us begin to show them the journey of a believer. He is not showing those people. Those people are living the life, but he is doing this particular record for our benefit, those of us who shall read and understand. Those of us who have kingdom glasses on, we will be able to see things that are hidden there. He says this is the way not to depend on Mara, on bitter waters, on no water. He said, take the tree and throw it into the water. The tree here speaks of the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus Christ. When you read it in, in, in uh, let's do it in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written cursed is everyone who hands way on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through the Father. So he was saying the time will come when the Savior will hang on a tree. The solution will hang on the tree. If you take the tree, throw it into the situation, the situation will be turned around. The bitter waters in the spirit of man shall be healed. And men will begin to have a sweet spirit. Men will begin to be a peaceful person. Where there was confusion and turmoil and thunders and, and all sort of feelings that we cannot understand. Where a person could not live with themselves. Either they were thirsty or when they thought they were not thirsty, what was in them was bitter. What will solve the problem of men is the tree. 
is the tree. Someone say it is the tree. So in the journey of the believer, the first thing that we must acknowledge for our lives to begin to take a particular pattern, we must encounter the men that hang on the tree. We must receive Jesus. You cannot come to church and join our clapping and our dancing and learn how we lift our hands and how we talk and learn how to say amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord and you have not gone to the tree. You will still come to church and remain miserable. You need, everyone must encounter the men that hang on the tree. Hallelujah. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse this everyone who hangs on a tree. This insertion was critical. So that verses like Exodus chapter 15 can become a reality to us. Because if you only read it that he hung on the cross. Now when we want to reconcile scripture, some of us who are radical and ruthless students of the word, we will not be able to convince you. So the Holy Spirit understood that he must declare that he hung on a tree. Because it is the tree that Moses pointed to as the Lord opened his eyes that it will be by the tree that the waters of the spirit of man shall be healed. Am I preaching? Number two. Someone said number two. Verse 23, 15, 23. Let's, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this in time. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara 24. 24. And the people complained against him and said, what shall we drink? I want you to understand that after you are saved, there has to be a question. <laughs> what shall we drink? See, the Bible says you shall not be drunk with wine, Nakusha, but with the Holy Ghost. So after we meet the tree, after the tree is released, we must be in need. We are in need of some water, but, but we don't know because the water we drink on the other side of the tree is bitter. So, but then the Bible says, look at the next verse. So he cried to the Lord and he showed him a tree. He shows him a tree so that he can bring the solution to that thirst. You can never be filled with the Holy Spirit before the cross. So he shows him the cross. That on the other side of the cross, the waters can be consumable. And they shall be sweet to your spirit. So number two, a believer must be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he cried to the Lord and he showed him a tree. When he cast it, when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Anushaya. So you must understand that after the tree is the sweetness of the water. After the tree, you need to be drinking. But what we drink is now sweet. It's called the Holy Spirit. Now, every believer for them to become overcomers in their journey with Christ, after they are saved, it is mandatory. It is not something that it is by the way. It is mandatory that they drink of the Spirit of God and that they are full of the Spirit. And you see, the Holy Spirit is sweet. Some of you don't know the Holy Spirit. When it comes upon you, it's so nice it cannot be explained. He goes deeper than wine. He affects you. He goes deeper into parts of your being that can never be touched by anyone. You know, the other day I was studying the Bible and it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. Now, the anointing only comes by the Holy Spirit. It says to heal the broken hearted. It means that the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit, can be able to go into the parts of man that only he can go when no equipment, no medicine, no 
solution can be able to go, but he will go. The spirit of God will go. He's sweet, but he's healing. Before the lockdown, we did a series in one month. We spoke about the Holy Spirit. If you are with us, you understand what the Holy Spirit can do. You know who is the Holy Spirit. You understand how to even go into the realm where he can pray through you by groanings and you can touch dimensions that are not necessarily available otherwise. Hallelujah. So the journey of a believer begins with the tree, with the cross of Jesus. On the other side of the cross, a believer must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you are coming to church and you are not filled, you, one of your main objectives should be to look for the Holy Spirit. Don't look for money. Don't look for miracles. Don't, no, look for the Holy Spirit. Desire the Holy Spirit. He that thirsts and hungers after righteousness, he shall be filled by the power of God. You must pursue him. You must say, when shall I come and appear before the Lord? You must seek after him. If you seek him, if you look for him, you shall be filled. I know people when they come to church, the first thing they are looking for is prophecy. <laughs> Sunday I was teaching about the power of what you are given to eat. See, if we are going to direct people to prophecies and, and hand, uh, 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 bundles, what are these things called? The wristbands and things. When Corona comes, <laughs> they will look at a handband and they will die of fear because there's nothing inside of them that can sustain them a distance. We must be very careful what we feed the people. We must be very careful what we eat. We, what we eat. God is teaching us in this season. We cannot survive by a sticker in the car. Thy word, O oh God, have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Ah, you are not listening to what I'm saying. So when you come to Jesus, you must meet him at the cross. After you meet him on the cross, on the other side of the cross, you must say, Holy Spirit, I am nothing without you. Fill me. Fill me. Save me from depression. Save me from peaceless life. If you read news or you surf internet, you realize how many people have died in this lockdown period around the world. People are dying of depression. Hopelessness. People are killing their boyfriends with pairs of, of scissors. People are hanging themselves. People are drinking poison. They leave notes behind. I would rather die than to stay in the house. When you know the Holy Spirit... Even if they lock you in the house the whole time, you are not alone. You have a friend that sticks closer than a brother who is always there by your side. Naturia Kushkana. There's an atmosphere in the house that only God can explain because there's another man. There's the fourth man in the fire. There is someone that has come to be with you who will never leave you nor forsake you. There is a God that is there by your side. When you wake up in the night and you have questions in your mind and you begin to say, Padugadaya, Padodadaya, every depression begins to live, every challenge begins to break. Every lack of peace begins to live your life. Because he gives us peace beyond understanding. After the cross, sir, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Anybody that is not filled must desire to be filled. Must long to be filled. She said to God, I long for you. I hunger for you. As a deer panteth for the water brooks, so does my soul thirst for the Lord. Yeah. When you have him, even if they send you to Russia to study, or to China, where they are actually fighting the church from gathering, you'll be able to panduki diakushka. Nemriki di Gadushka. 
you begin to see tears falling now not because you are crying but because there is a sweet water that is flowing down your spirit and you have the joy of the lord which is your strength you go through the fire you go through the waters because he is there by your side you have the holy ghost with you Someone said, I need the Holy Spirit. Number three. Number three. Let's read from verse 25. Very interesting things I see here. So he cried out. No, 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 please. We are in Exodus 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Exodus 15, 25. So he cried out to the Lord, showed him a tree, which he cast in, into the waters, the, the bitter waters. <laughs> the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. I'm seeing something I didn't see earlier, but I'll leave it. The next thing, 26. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the disease on you, which was, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Now, after you go through the cross, and you drink the waters. The next thing that God begins to do with you is that He begins to restore you. Yeah, He begins to restore you. He restores you. He restoreth my soul. He begins to restore you. He says, Yeah, I, this is very powerful. He, he says, as you keep getting the word, as you keep getting the word into your spirit, you observe my commandments and my statutes. If, if you follow my way, if, if you've gone through the tree and you have drunk the, the, the sweet waters, I will be committed to you to heal you. Since none of the sicknesses and diseases that were upon the Egyptians shall come upon says i become the lord that heals you i'm jehovah rafa this is a dimension in the church that is very critical it is a season in the life of a believer to be healed and to be restored this is what makes the church a hospital see if you don't know these things in the order that i'm teaching you today you are going to meet people in the church and you are going to kill them when god is still healing them you are going to have people give their lives to the Lord and you want them to all of a sudden become supermen. People will come here broken, still struggling with this and struggling with that and you are going to judge them and sentence them to death. But what you don't understand is that as they are getting the commandments of the Lord and the statutes of the Lord, he is taking sickness and disease out of them. This is not only talking about physical health. He's talking about healing in all dimensions of man. In spirit, in soul, and in body. That's why a church is a hospital. So when you come to church, don't jump stages. Allow yourself to be healed. Allow yourself to be restored. Allow God to, to do a work in you. To finish that which he began in you. You know, sometimes I see people, they just join the church today, tomorrow they want a title. It's very common now. They are still sick, full of serious weaknesses, serious limping in their spirit. <laughs> am, I, am I talking to the right people here? When you come after the tree, you pass by the water, you must be healed. You must allow yourself to be restored. The world is an unfair place. I know it has brutalized you. I know there are many injuries in your spirit. But when you come to him, you must allow him to be the Lord that 
healed thee. The Lord that healed thee. You can never serve God effectively when you are bleeding inside. Some people jump into marriages. Bleeding. And they make a covenant. And they are going to bleed on another person. It's going to become Mara again. As if they have never seen a tree. As if they never drank the water. It's going to become bitter. Like Naomi. Allow yourself to be restored. Allow. And you see, we as also senior or mature Christians, we need to understand this. That when we bring people to the Lord or people join the church, we shouldn't hurry them. Because nobody hurried you. Yeah, it's amazing how the church, I think when we get saved, we, we lose memory. Part of our memory is lost. Sometimes I see people who are terrible. You know terrible? Terrible! They are chief judges. I wish they were chief justice, but rather they are chief judges. They are the ones that are quick to see a speck in the eye of a brother when there is a pole of electricity in their eye. Have you forgotten when you came? How we loved you, how we nursed you, how we understood you, how we understood you even when you were manifesting foolishness. Have, has it gone? Have, do, you have, do, do you have a problem? I, have you lost your mind? So we must give people a chance. Some people heal in a short space of time. Some people heal in an average time. Some people heal in a long period of time. But it is healing nonetheless. And we must allow God to heal his people at his pace. That's why the Bible says, is there no balm in Gilead? In other words, when you come here, you must be able to find balm. Balm is healing. It's something that healeth. It's something that God uses as the God and the Lord that healeth. When we come here, we must expose people to the balm of Gilead. We can't judge people. You know, sometimes when, when we are now feeling, I'm, I can't go to castle anymore. I said castle, lager. <laughs> when we start feeling like I don't do girls anymore, I don't do boys, I really feel saved. We start turning around now. <laughs> a woman, you know, you know, we, we don't read the Bible. Just as a woman caught in the act of adultery is brought to him. In the act, not that they suspected. They removed a man from, you know, by then they were abusing women. They didn't bring both. They removed a man from on top of her and took her. Yeah, she was caught. You don't read Bible. It says in the act of adultery. And they come to Pastor Jesus. Say, Pastor Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. What should we do? The Bible says, and Jesus began to write. The evangelist says he was writing the sins of the people that brought the woman. That's what evangelists say when they are preaching to us in a crusade. So when they read, they were convicted. And Jesus now faced them. Said, any of you who doesn't have any problem, let them be the first to take a stone. And throw this woman. Senior ministers of archbishops and all that. They left. The Bible says they walked away one by one. They eventually say that the one who left first was the one with the greatest sins. <laughs> the moment Jesus said, the one without sin must throw a stone. The one who was conscious the most of his sins was gone. And then others were trying to think I can be here. And then they remember, then they went. And then the one who was thinking that they are very righteous were still standing there until the Spirit of God said, Remember, remember. And the Bible says they all walked away. Jesus doesn't condemn the one caught in adultery. Who are we? Who are we? 
These were acts of Jesus to teach us that we are going to meet situations, but we must look at the people and say, Where art thou accusers? And she will say, They are God. A woman is always a type of the church. A woman, the church is the bride of Christ. So this is actually giving us a picture of a sick church. An adulterous church. Says, Where are they to the church? Where are thy accusers? He said they have gone to the church. He says, Neither do I condemn you. Go. Go and try again. Sin no more. Sin no more. You are caught in adultery. Let Jesus say, I don't condemn you. Me also, I don't condemn you. The righteous one. A son of God. So I'm trying to say that when we're in church, we must be careful. When we hold the mic and we stand before the people, we must be careful. We must be careful of utterances that are going to further give the people a headache and make them feel like God is not fair. I just came to you. I'm still limping. Why are you impatient with me, Lord? Sometimes it comes out in our preaching. Sometimes it comes out in conversations. Sometimes it comes through a look. <laughs> the way we look at people is like we have a heaven. <laughs> the way sometimes we judge people is like we have created a heaven somewhere where only us and perfect people will go. <laughs> Do you have a heaven? Do you know heaven? So I'm trying to teach you that when we pass the tree, we go through the waters. After the waters, there's a time for healing. And sometimes it's not even like time, it's season. <laughs> you can be saved 10 years and then you are being healed from other things. <laughs> Sicknesses are not the same. <laughs> Flu, headache is not the same as cancer. <laughs> yeah, you can compare uh, coronavirus with HIV. I mean, they tell us the people who are sick when we started lockdown, they are now fine. Uh, people who have been diagnosed with HIV are still taking RVs. Uh, the way you are behaving now, it's like coronavirus is more stronger than HIV. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how we, we do things. See, so I'm trying to show you that sicknesses are different. So sometimes, some people are moving. That's why Paul will say that I, God has put a thorn in my flesh to perfect me. It's like a whole apostle has a thorn in the flesh to remind him you are still human. You must continue to trust me and to pray me. Pray me. <laughs> now that you are seeing the third heaven and all this and you are writing <laughs> to the Corinthian church, to Galatian church, to, to the Philippians and then you are going to become too proud. So I will leave this sickness in your system to remind you that you are mortal. One of the things I hate with a passion is the spirit of judgment. Yeah, I, 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 I think that the, the more you grow, Closer to God, the more merciful you become. Because you realize that you are a mere mortal. Yeah, you realize that, hey, I'm nothing before God. Yeah, people who are judgmental are very far from God. The more you come closer to God, the more merciful you become. It's actually, it's like even like you condone problems more. It's like you are, you are, it's like you are dying when you are becoming more alive, actually. But to the judges, it's like the pastor is backslidden. How can he work with people like this? I ordained one of my sons and I heard news in the street. They said, ah, so so and so is also ordained their pastor. Faith covenant is finished. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> say, ah, they are ordaining such a thing because in their mind, it's certain type of perfect people who can work for God. But when you judge and also analyze the person speaking, they can't even lift their finger to defend 
Jesus with that perfection. I didn't want to go too deep, but you are provoking me. So there is a season after the cross that we need sweet waters. Number, number three, we need to be restored. So part of the restoration is in the mind. If you read it in Romans 12 verse number 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, hallelujah, hey, that was in verse number 1, that you present yourself a living sacrifice. Verse number 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where the world is being drained out of your system, it's a season of restoration. It's a season of healing. Where your hard drive is being flushed out of the world. Some computers cooperate quickly. Some computers, they crash. And you hear that there were actually not only that it had content, it had viruses. <laughs> when you are trying to delete files that are not useful for the new owner, which is Jesus Christ. So you have to labor. You have to labor. Some of the pains and the wounds are in deep in our souls. We're being wounded. Some of us never had fathers. Some of us were being abused. We have been raped. We have been rejected. We have been treated with the left hand. Do you understand that English? We have gone through things. Life has really been ruthless to us. So some of you who grew up in palaces with everything available, when you come here and it's quickly that you have moved into dimensions of glory, bear with us because you don't know where we have been. You don't know what we have suffered. You don't know the kind of scars in our souls. You don't know the kind of renewing that we need by the washing of the water, by the word of God to be transformed in the realm of our imagination and in our souls. It will not happen at the same time and at the same speed. I think I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good. Number four. Number four. Someone say number four. Let's go to that. Exodus 15. That little passage. Is Let's go 27. Let's go. See then when you when you, you meet the tree and you drink the water and you are restored, we move forward to a place called Elim. <laughs> when we get to Elim, two major things that we see there that I want to close on. The first thing the Bible says there were 12 wells of water. 12 wells of water, which speaks of the 12 disciples. 12 wells, wells of water. It speaks about discipleship. This is where the church is moving now from with a particular group of people from being a hospital to becoming barracks. Barracks is a place where soldiers are trained to become soldiers. And so he will be going around and he will meet Bartholomew and he said, come follow me. He will be moving around and he will meet John and James, the sons of, 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 of that man who was a, a fisherman. He will say, come follow me. He will meet Simon who will later be Peter. Come follow me. He will meet Judas as Cariot and he will say, come and follow me. And after he gathered them, he will begin to to mentor them. Can I say something? You can't be sent when you have not been discipled. So as you are being healed, there will begin a process of discipleship so that you become a well of water. The water speaks of two things in the Bible. It speaks of the Holy Spirit and it speaks of the weight. Water. 
So it means that these are wells that were filled by the weight. Because of following Jesus, he downloaded into them. He wanted them to say, just like he said of the Father, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He wanted that after he is gone, and he told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you are in God with the sick waters. He, 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 he was saying, then you become witnesses for me. The word witness means that when they see you, they will understand who I am. By seeing you, they will understand who are you will witness. You become a witness. You become evidence in court that I was here. <laughs> but for them to become a well, they have to be discipled. They have to be allowed. The, these days, I, I see people, people, they, they just come yesterday, today they are, they are prophet. <laughs> we were laughing about somebody. We used to see him here making noise. Now I see him, I see papers. He's a prophet sleeping with girls around. <laughs> Watch out there. Eh? When you are sick, allow yourself to be healed. Don't jump stages and start doing funny things. Allow yourself to be discipled. Allow yourself to be developed into something deep with water. The Bible calls it a well content you are, you are not shaken you are not moved a well we can't give you to the world when you don't have water what are you going to give to the world you must have water stop jumping around sit down and be discipled have the willingness they followed Jesus for three and a half years Jesus downloading into that system. Say, follow me. Leave your this your your your, your fishing of fish. I'll make you see the making process. It's a discipleship process where you must catch the spirit of your teacher. Where you must become like your teacher. Where when you speak, we don't need to ask, whose are you? Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says one day they caught the disciples. And then they, as they were talking to them, their language gave them away. And the, the people that caught them concluded that we can see you have been with Jesus. Discipleship makes you to become a protege. You become a product that is going to become just like the one that poured into your life. Are you listening to me? We can never effectively open branches, brethren, until we have people that have caught the spirit of the founder. I'm telling you, we will desire, we will wish. We will admire other churches that are doing it. Until we have people that have caught the spirits of the founder to become like the Holy Spirit with the Father and Jesus. Said, I will go to my Father and I will ask him to send you another helper, the Alos Paraclitos, another of the same kind. When he comes, it will be just like Jesus is here. The only difference is that he will be in all places at the same time. That's the only difference. I'm, I'm contained and trapped in my body. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Wow. So I said discipleship. I said discipleship. Yeah. So that is in Mark chapter 3, verse 13. It says, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. This is talking about Jesus. Then he appointed 12. The 
they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Hallelujah. Number five and I close. In Elim, Elim is like a Bible school, eh? Elim. The other thing that was found there were 70 palm trees. See, it says, they camped there by the waters. They found 70 palm trees. Now, the next phase after discipleship is the phase which I call the ministry phase ministry phase where you are sent out to go and become a witness of your coach where you go and minister what you have been in the school of discipleship and have been taught 70 palm trees these are very strong trees palm trees if you don't know palm trees, you go to Grand Palm. They're decorated with palm trees. The palm tree. It's not a tree that you can just come and push around. It's a rooted tree. Yeah. It's a tree of, that is on the other side of discipleship. It's not a tree that is tossed to and fro by every doctrine. If you go to Grand Palm in winter and summer, the palm tree is still there. <laughs> Become strong, you are solid, immovable, your roots are deep. But I will show you a scripture as to why 70 palm trees in the New Testament. Are you ready? Luke chapter 10, verse 1, up to 3. things. The Lord after which things? After discipling them. After turning them into a well. And when he looked at them in the realms of the spirit, they were like palm trees. Seventy of them. Says after this, the Lord appointed seventy others also. And sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to come. <laughs> this is how church planting is done. After the phase, the, the, the phase number five is a, is a phase of sending out. It's a phase where people have been, they have been through the tree, they drank the water, they have been restored, they have been discipled. Now they are sent out in a living. They are sent out. And when you send them out, you send them two by two. Yeah. When they get there, they begin to do what they saw their master do. What they saw their teacher do. Everything that they learned, every pattern that they appreciated, they develop and allows. So that when Jesus comes, he doesn't go ahead of them. He comes and says, where, where, where he himself was about to go. They go and plan, they go and work and till the ground and labor. And Jesus will come. <laughs> Jesus will come. So I say he will come. So we must come to a dimension where we have matured, we have been discipled, but you can't be in church 10 years, 20 years, and you are just sitting here to enjoy. You must be prepared to be sent out. You must be sent out. Some of you, you must become the sent one. The word to say, ap ap apostle, Apollos, means the sent one. When you are under a grace of an apostle, you must be sentable. You must be sendable. You must be what? 
Some of you, you have to be sent to schools. Sent to where you are working. You must be sent, some of you, into villages to start. And to practice what you have learned. Because you have become a palm tree. Somebody say, I'm a palm tree. I'm rooted. I'm grounded. I'm solid. I'm immovable. I understand the heart of my father. Since he sends the 70. So after the 12, he sent the 70. He sent the 70. Someone say, he sent the 70. Yeah. Are you ready to be sent? Every believer must have a vision that one day I'll be healed. One day I'll be discipled. One day I will be ready to go. Everyone in the church must have that type of mindset. Don't just become a consumer all your life. You are just eating. You are just eating. It's nice. It's nice. Listen to me. The longer you sit under a ministry of a man of God, you start developing familiar spirit. When he says, I'm giving an example, you know what they're about to say. Those examples, when they're repeated, they're meant for a new group that has come. When he opens a scripture, the next time I read from this, you'll be knowing where I'm going. <laughs> so at the point, you must grow. You must develop your muscle. You must be ready. You must pray. You must soak yourself in the word. And you, may, you must become a palm tree. You must become solid. And you'll be in the season of sendability. That is why it's a very big problem to remain a child forever. Yeah. You are saved one year, you can't pay tithe. One year you've been here sitting under this kind of grace. You are not paying tithe. Two years. You can't pray. When you are given a mic, close with us with prayer. Father. Two years. Lead prayer. Uh, Father, Father. Uh, Father, Father. There's something wrong in the system. There's something wrong in the system. Two years, three years you are sitting here. We are opening Exodus 15. We are reading for you from 25. We are explaining rivers, we are waters, trees, wells and palm trees. And you can't leave prayer. There's a problem. You are not serving anywhere in the church. You are just sitting in the church. You are just a passenger. Four years, you are still a passenger. I'm preaching. I said, I'm preaching. Find something to do. Put your hands to the plow and begin to serve in the house of God. Do something for your God. Participate. Become part of what God is doing. Become a palm tree. Some people... They start serving, uh, serving their people because people don't pray, people don't really love God. They start shrinking and dying and pulling back. One of the things I detest that I don't like is a person that holds a conversation with me and tell me, you know, ten years ago God used to use me. Wait, God used to use. So what happened? You know. You know, I remember, I remember when, when we used to go into the streets, I remember, I remember. So what about yesterday? I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened, but 10 years ago, I don't enjoy such conversations. Because me, I work by signs and symptoms. You are actually revealing to me that you are backslidden. In your excitement, you are exposing yourself. What are you doing for God now? What are you actively doing for God now? Where are your fruits that you can show me now? Now, how many people have you brought to the Lord? How many people are you taking care of? How many people are you shepherding? How many people are you following up? How many people are you preaching to? How many people are you visiting? Three years in the church, four years in the church.
See, when I preach, there's a group I meet at the tree. It's a relevant time for them to receive that. There's a group I meet at the waters. It's a relevant aspect of the message for them. But there's a group that I also meet in restoration. It's a relevant message for them. See, so when I'm preaching, I know that I'm touching everyone in the church at that level. After that, there is a group that must understand discipleship. They must become the 12 wells. But then at another dimension, there is a group which forms the 70 palm trees. So when I'm ministering, you must be able to identify where you are. And you must be challenged where you are. There's no problem with where you are as long as you are growing where you are. Because when you are growing where you are, you will grow out of where you are into the next season of your life. You can't remain a baby Christian at the tree for the rest of your life. You can only be excited you are filled with the Holy Spirit for the rest of your life. You can't be sick forever. Oh, they should mind our feelings. You know, they should mind our feelings. Ten years later, you know, Christians are insensitive. And that is it. Ten years later. We still have to nurse you. You must move, become a disciple. most of complaining members of churches one of the major causes of complaining is lack of maturity is remaining babies for long is remaining in the stage they are in is becoming a patient too long you go to marina there there is a discharge register I worked there you can't be sick forever there either you die or you are discharged back home there are people who are refusing to die in the hospital. They say home based care. Go home. They will take care of you until you die at home. Not in the hospital. So if you are here, you are sick. Get healed. Get healed. You are finishing Panado in the church. So every stage, there's no problem. But you must be growing in the stage where you are. Because as long as you are growing in the stage where you are, you are growing out of the stage that you are in. And you are growing into the next stage. It is the journey of a believer. Put your hands together, I'm done.